Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be playing with the Love You So stamp set and the Folk Heart dies. These are part of the exclusive Essentials by Ellen stamps and dies. We released these last year and they are among my favorites. I absolutely love this stamp set because it's filled with sayings that I used to tell my kids when they were little and I continue saying them to my granddaughter Lily who is three and she's making all these connections and I know she's going to love this card because of the saying and because of the pink the heart and the gold crown and the glitter. So this has got all the components that Lily loves. <laughs> I'm going to ink up the sentiment with archival jet black and stamp it onto the smooth side of a four and a quarter inch square of watercolor paper. And I heat set the ink very quickly because I'm going to send this through my big shot. I've got the smallest of the folk heart dies right there in the center, right over the top of the sentiment. I'm going to use a little bit of washi tape to anchor it down. But sometimes when I send the ink through uh, something that's inked through my Big Shot, the ink will transfer on occasion to the upper pad. And then I end up transferring that to another project when I'm trying to die cut it. So I was trying to eliminate that by heat setting the ink first and then going ahead and sending it through. And now that I've got all that in place, I can go ahead and come back and stamp the crown. I could have done this first, but I didn't think about it till afterwards. So <laughs> it's like, oh, not too late. And then I'm going to shave down the edges here to get a four inch square piece. And I'm using my tonic guillotine trimmer, which enables me to get some really nice straight cuts and smooth uh, little slivers there. And I rotate my piece upside down there because sometimes when you change the perspective, you get a better idea of whether or not you actually got something centered or not. So that's one of the tricks I use to make sure I've got things centered. And I'm going to trace the outline here with a fine tip black marker. What I didn't count on was that this marker is dry. And so I had to go and grab another one. This is a, a Copic multi-liner. And I'm just going to go ahead and squiggle more lines on there so it'll look like this was all deliberate. I'm just faking it here. <laughs> Anyway, when I'm done, it actually looks like I sewed through that layer, even though it's just all done with a marker. So I'm going to take that folk heart die that I cut out. I tossed it into a bowl after I die cut it and set it aside. And now uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my Peerless watercolor palette to do some watercoloring with my Pentel Aquash. And I'm just going to quickly rub some of this pinkish reddish color over the top. Just do some super quick watercolor work. And I used a piece of micropore tape that I had laying on my desk because it's low tack and it's just going to hold that in place while I'm working so I don't have to get uh, watercolor all over my fingers trying to hang on to it. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and set that aside to dry once I get my fingers unstuck. <laughs> I have a base card that I made from some basil marshmallow. I love the heavyweight, 100 uh, pound weight of this cardstock. And I went ahead and made the card four and a quarter inches all around square and then went ahead and creased it with my Teflon bone folder after I scored it. I'm going to mount that down flush to the front of the card with some tape runner there. And then I took the folk heart die and die cut a couple more pieces from some scrap watercolor paper and glued them, stacked them and glued them. I think there's three layers there. And then the fourth is the one that I watercolored, sandwiching all that together to make a nice chipboard style embellishment. And then I'm going to add a little bit more glue to the back of the whole thing so that I can glue it and inset it right back in where it was, but it will be elevated and tinted as compared to what was originally stamped. So that's kind of a fun thing to do and people always look at that and just like, how did they do that? <laughs> I got a little heavy handed with the glue. So I had a little strip um, that I had trimmed off earlier and I just cut off the tip at an angle and used that as a squeegee to kind of scrape up all that excess glue that was squidging out there when I pressed it into place. I'm going to highlight the crown with some Uniball Signo gel pen. This is a pretty gold color and I know my granddaughter will like that. And then I'm going to go over the top of the die cut heart with some glossy accents. I'm going to put a thick coating on there. It might be a little bit cloudy when it goes on, but it will dry perfectly clear and create a nice high gloss shine there on that heart. And I love the way it uh, almost magnifies the bits of the words that are there on the heart. For one last finishing touch, I'm going to take some gold stickles and angle that and butt it up right against the edge of that watercolor panel. And because it's flush mounted to the card front, um, I can just run the tip of that 
nozzle of the glitter glue right against it and get a nice fine bead of glitter glue all the way around the edges and it just finishes off the card perfectly. I love this card. It turned out so cute. I can't wait to send it to Lily. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com and you can see more still shots and further details at the classroom blog. Thanks for watching.